Hello, amazing artists. Welcome to another edition of Art with Mrs. Young. Have you ever heard the expression, April showers bring May flowers? Well, we've had a few April showers. Unfortunately, we don't get May flowers that look like this. Since we can't go see these, I thought I would bring them to you. These are the tulip fields in Holland, and someday I hope to go visit those for real. This week though, we're going to learn about a new artist. Allow me to introduce you to Heather Galler, a contemporary folk artist. A folk artist is an artist who has typically not been trained in an art school, but instead creates art about what is important to him or her in a way that's also important. Heather Galler is a well-known, award-winning New York artist. You can see from these landscape paintings that Heather Galler uses the element of line, shape, and color to create bold, brilliant patterns in her works of art. She once said, I love color to the point that some people would be turned off, but I love to be inspired by book, movies, books, and of course, other art. But the most important element of inspiration is the environment. The Mexican, Italian, and French culture drive me to paint the most. Galler also enjoys painting portraits of animals, particularly dogs. She paints with oil, acrylic, and mixed media to create these amazing folk art paintings. Today's art lesson will focus on Heather Galler's beautiful still life paintings. A still life is a genre of art that focuses on an arrangement of still objects, such as fruit or flowers. Here, you see Galler uses bright, bold colors contrasted with a lot of black and white in her vases and backgrounds. Her flowers are imperfect with simple shapes and lines and lots of color. Take a moment to study the shapes, lines, and color you see in some of her amazing still life work. So today we are going to create a Heather Galler inspired floral still life. Let's get going. Okay, so for this project today, you will need a piece of white paper. Um, I did study some of Heather Galler's flowers and made a little just idea sheet of different examples that I saw. If you wanna print that out, you do not have to. Um, a black permanent marker is best, although you can use a black crayon, and something to color with. Today, I am going to do um, just twistable crayons. If you have watercolors, that would be ideal to do even a crayon resist with your watercolors, but <clears throat> for today, I'm gonna keep it simple and just use basic materials. Okay, so we are going to create a still life. Most of our flowers are gonna be in the upper half. Our vase is going to be on the lower half. So. We want to make sure that we overlap some of our flowers. That's how we can make something that's flat look, look as though one flower is in front of the other. So I noticed that um, her flowers are mostly circular and have a lot of these scalloped petal lines. So I'm just gonna kinda start and fill my space from side to side. I wanna be sure to add a few leaves and then we will go down at the bottom. So go ahead and be creative and let's do some folk art flowers. Thank you. 
So as you're drawing your flowers, think about placement of your flowers and which flowers are in front of other flowers. I want this flower to be in front of the next flower I draw, therefore I'm only going to draw part of the circle for that flower. I noticed that Heather Galler uses polka dots, stripes, lots of scalloped lines in her simple flower designs. I noticed that many of them have a circle around the outside edge. So I'm going to keep drawing. I can't wait to see what you do. messed up there a little but that is okay all right so coming down here I'm gonna make two lines that slant inward for my vase and come all the way up here actually I'm gonna make it come all the way up here I'm gonna make the bottom curved a bit so it looks like the vase is actually curved and I'm going to make the <clears throat> A line here so that it looks like it's actually sitting on a countertop. Now I noticed that Heather Galler does a lot of black and white pattern in her design and so I'm just gonna keep my vase very simple. I'm gonna do some lines that actually curve a bit to give the illusion that my pot is actually curved and I'm gonna leave this black and white on the ground. I noticed she does a lot of checkers I'm gonna do kind of a diamond checker pattern. So I'm gonna go side to side this way. All right, now for a background. You could do the background with colored pencils. I'm gonna go ahead and um, just draw some vertical lines. Again, this is behind. It's okay if my lines are not perfectly straight. Okay, now what I notice in some of Heather Galler's pictures is she's got quite a bit of black. And in these spaces, what I noticed when she had a space between flowers is she colored it in black. So I'm gonna go ahead and color in um, some of this black space that doesn't have a lot of meaning to kind of make those flowers pop because I wanna do, I wanna do really bright colors for this and the black provides a contrast for those colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you go ahead and color in some of your black spots. And I'm going to color in my vase. You can color at this point any way you wish. Okay, now that I have the vase painted, or excuse me, colored, and the um, tabletop colored, I noticed that uh, Heather Galler sometimes uses a little bit of black in her flowers just to give it some um, pop. So I'm just going to go back through and you do not have to do this, but I'm just going to give a little bit of black because when we color this in, folk art isn't realistic art. So the colors are going to be big blocks of color, not a lot of um, value, meaning I'm not trying to make these look three-dimensional necessarily. They have a little bit of form because they overlap, but when I color this, I'm not going to shade around the edges and make it darker in the shadows. I'm going to do big chunks of color. And so I am going to create some contrast using just some touches of black. You don't have to do this part. There is a lot of black coloring in this project, but it creates a nice contrast.
Okay, so I don't wanna overdo the black. Um, also, I'm just thinking about my background. I don't wanna overdo a lot of the pattern either. Um, so for right now, I think I'm just gonna leave the background as it is um, and start coloring. I'm gonna use bright colors. I don't wanna use too many colors on each, um, but I wanna use lots of colors that might contrast well. So I know like complementary colors like the purples and um, yellows make each other pop, orange and blue, red and green. So um, go back and look at some Heather Galler um, examples if you need to. And remember, not a lot of shading. She does solid chunks of color. So that is what I'm gonna do. make a background color that will really make all this pop but I don't want it to be too busy because I already have a lot of color going on here especially if you filled your page with even more flowers than I did so I didn't use a ton of blue I noticed and so I am going to use blue in the background um, for a little bit of variety I'm gonna do light blue dark blue light blue dark blue was a lot of work I'm not gonna lie my hand is very tired and you may have had to take a rest a few times like I did but we now have a Heather Galler inspired still life hopefully you will give this to someone amazing for Mother's Day